Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, we're gonna be going over the five things that I hate about the Ram TRX, and really the video should be titled the five things that I slightly disagree with on the TRX, but that title isn't nearly as fun, so uh, let's get right into it. Now, the first thing that I hate about the TRX has to do with the fuel economy slash fuel tank size. Boom, that startup never gets old. So if you've been living under a rock and don't know what the TRX is, it's a 700 horsepower wide body, Baja truck with a supercharged 6.2 liter V8 and off-road tires and all that kind of stuff. So fuel economy is not great. It's rated for 10 around town and 14 on the highway. Now, I went off-roading yesterday and it brought my average down to 8.3. I've been averaging around nine to sometimes 10 miles per gallon. Uh, typically, I do a mix between highway and city driving, but understand that my truck's got like 3,000 miles on it now, so it's pretty much fully broken in at this point. Uh, but I am at 4,500 feet elevation, so that is going to slightly affect fuel economy. And the other thing is, all of the interstates here in Utah are 70 to 80 miles an hour, and most of the fuel economy tests on vehicles are done at like 60 miles an hour, so I'll probably never see that 14 miles per gallon on the highway. But that aside, it's not the MPG that I hate. I understand that having a 700 horsepower supercharged V8 under the hood is going to lead to having bad MPG. The thing that I'm sad about is that they didn't put a bigger fuel tank in the T-Rex. So if you guys don't know, the T-Rex has Ram's biggest fuel tank you can get for 1500, which is a 33 gallon fuel tank. Now in any other 1500, that's more than sufficient. But when you're averaging like what I'm doing, 8.3 miles per gallon because I'm driving the truck in performance settings, taking it off road and all that, it would be nice to have a little bit more. I think if Ram just did like a 40 gallon fuel tank, that would have been absolutely perfect because if you average about 10 miles per gallon and you've got a 40 gallon fuel tank, that's 400 miles of range. I think that would be the sweet spot for the truck. But I understand from like an engineering perspective and all that kind of stuff, adding seven gallons of fuel might sound easy to us, but the engineers might be like, well, dude, the extra weight's gonna run the weight distribution. It's gonna mess up with this and that. And we fine tune the shocks and all this. I, I get that. I'm just saying, like, I wish I had a bigger fuel tank. I understand why it doesn't. Uh, I guess the last thing I do want to mention that's not really a negative, but it's a positive is you guys can see I'm in just under half a tank. I took the truck off-road, did a bunch of off-roading and drove all the way back home. And I still have a little bit under half a tank. With the Raptor, I would have used up all my fuel. So somehow I did better fuel economy wise with the T-Rex than I did with the Raptor on an off-road setting. I'm just gonna leave that there. The number two thing that I hate about the T-Rex has to do with the size of the truck. If you guys don't know, the T-Rex is almost 90 inches wide and it's 230 something inches long. It's it's a big truck. Now, the reason that it's so wide is you've got the widened fenders for the wide body so that you can have a wider track with the truck. Uh, the mirrors do pop out a little bit past the fenders, but not too much. And then same thing with the rear fenders. And then it's just a crew cab only configuration. So it's like the longer cab and then you get the shorter bed. So that's where you get the two 230 something inches in length but yeah i mean it's a big truck and also the height especially with the ram bar it's super tall i tried to take it to a parking garage about two weeks ago didn't fit <laughs> like it, it was too tall to make it into the parking garage so so yeah overall like it's just a massive massive truck so getting into parking spaces is difficult fitting in parking garages might not happen there's just a lot of stuff with the width now admittedly with the size of the truck, it gives it tons of road presence, so it looks really good on the road. I love the look of the wide body, and the wider track does give you much better traction on the off-road. And then the rack, obviously it adds height with the truck, so it runs the uh, clearance when you're going under stuff, but that rack's really practical once I throw the lights on the truck. So even though this is kind of a negative with the truck because it's so large, it's also the reason the truck's so wide is because of what it is, so it makes sense. But I still have to put it in the video, okay, folks? The third thing that I hate about the Ram T-Rex has to do with the towing and payload capability of the truck. Okay, let's find this thing. And I don't know if the camera's going to focus. 1,034 pounds for the payload. 
Now we're out to the bed of the truck because we're talking about the towing and the payload. So obviously the numbers are low, the payload's just over a thousand pounds, the towing capacity is about 8,000 pounds with the T-Rex. And just for reference, the lesser version of the T-Rex, aka the Ram Rebel, has a higher payload and towing capacity. A Rebel, you can get a payload of about 1,400, 1,500 pounds, and then a towing capacity of about 11,000 pounds because it has a 392 axle ratio. So again, this truck's baby brother can tow more than it and you can have more stuff in the bed of the truck. Now, you guys are probably wondering, why does this truck have such low payload? Well, the shock and suspension setup are a little bit of it. The biggest reason is the engine underneath the hood. When you put a big supercharged 6.2 liter V8 under the hood of a truck, you're gonna have a low payload. You've got so much weight in the truck and that's just how things work. Like if you take a, if you take around all your friends in your truck and you try to load up the bed, you might actually exceed the payload of your truck because passengers also count as payload. That's just how things work. So yeah, I personally would rather have a 6.2 liter V8 than a higher payload, but I understand a lot of people wouldn't. So yeah, that's the thing with the truck, low payload, low towing capacity. Now the fourth thing that I hate about the T-Rex is extremely nitpicky, but it has to do with the lights or actually the lack of lights on the back rack. So again, we're here to the back of the truck. You guys can see the Ram bar here on the truck. This is a factory option that you can get with the T-Rex. And if you guys remember with the demo of the T-Rex, it had lights here on the top of the rack and you can't get it from the factory. You have to get it installed from a dealer as an aftermarket accessory. I wish it was a factory option. Now, normally I'd be like, okay, you know what? That's completely fine. Manufacturers do that all the time where they show a vehicle with factory, uh, or sorry, with aftermarket options in their kind of like thing with advertising for the vehicle. I, I get it. But here's, here's the thing about the T-Rex. Again, you've got the Ram bar from the factory and well, you'll understand once the truck's all started up, so we got a normal TRX startup and everything. And then it'll show us our drive mode that we're in in just a moment after it starts up. Look at the depiction of the TRX. So the TRX, even inside the truck, physically inside the truck, shows you an option that you cannot get on the truck from the factory. You have to get it dealer installed. Again, it's hard for me to find five things that I hate about the truck, so I had to be super nitpicky for this video. But I still think that's hilarious. They're like, okay, we're gonna show this like, and, and also it doesn't even show the color because my truck was black originally. This is the only color that it shows with the TRX for the drive modes is the truck in silver. And so I guess that's the other thing that can be part of this point is the fact that they don't have your like color here for the depiction, but also like Ram, you need to make those lights a factory option and not a dealer aftermarket option because you freaking show it on the center screen. Now the fifth and final thing has to do with the options and the pricing of the truck. Now I'll walk you guys through the truck to show you kind of the ridiculousness with the options, but you can see base price $70,000, which I mean for a Hellcat powered off-road Baja truck, pretty awesome. But then after options, $94,795 and that's before any dealer addendums. Now I paid MSRP for my truck but most people have not been that lucky. Most dealerships are charging at a minimum five to 10, sometimes even 20, 30, $40,000 over sticker. So yeah, the price of this truck can get pretty ridiculous uh, from options and then from dealer markups as well, which dealer markups, that's not Ram's fault. That's the dealerships. They have no control over that. But I, I kind of want to explain some of these options to you because once you actually hear it, it's kind of crazy. Well, uh, let's talk about these fun little options here. So those beadlock capable wheels, almost $2,000 for that. These side steps, that's like a $1,000 option. Not, no biggie though. The Ram bar on the back, that's like $2,000 and it doesn't even come with the lights, sadly. And then uh, if we pop into the interior, this is where things get even more exciting. You guys know how much I love this red accenting. It's just some stitching, some red in the speaker, more stitching, a little bit of red on the seats. Well, that's another thousand bucks as an option. The carbon fiber, I think that's like another thousand dollars as well, which gives you some carbon fiber elements throughout the truck. And then to get the nicer seats that this truck has, like the upgraded seats, it's part of an $8,000 package. It gives you way more than just seats, but you guys get what I'm saying. This is a far cry from the $70,000 base price to get the truck fully loaded like this. Well, $25,000 in options. Harman Kardon sound system, eh, you know, another thousand bucks, no biggie. But yeah, I mean, to uh, add all the options of the truck, it definitely gets expensive. Now, all the crazy options and all of the uh, five things I hate aside, this truck I think is the best value you can buy brand new right now. I don't think there's anything else that compares to it because 
while the neon green reflects in the garage. No, but seriously, like this truck is such a good value. First off, it's an insane off-road machine. I don't care what any of the Raptor fanboys say, the Bilstein shocks with the five link closed suspension absolutely destroys any off-roading and you do it way more comfortably compared to the Raptor. And if you haven't seen my off-road review, go watch it at the T-Rex. I was going faster in this truck than I was doing in the Raptor with a lot of the trails. You get tons of flex from the closed suspension. The Bilsteins make everything super smooth. It's great as an off-road vehicle. But it's not just an off-road vehicle. It's also a crazy on-road performance vehicle. It has 700 horsepower from a Hellcat engine. And so you can have tons of fun off-road and then you have tons of fun on-road. And then on top of that, it has a really nice luxury interior and it has a nice luxury car ride. And so the T-Rex is expensive. $95,000 is a lot of money for mine. However, this is like three vehicles in one. Again, it's an off-roader, plus it's a crazy performance car on-road plus it's a luxury car. I want you guys to tell me another car that you can compare to this because right now there is nothing on the market that you can buy that has all the capability that this truck has and has all the utility that this truck has. There, there really isn't anything else. And I, I think the craziest thing to me is the fact that you can buy a wide body Challenger Hellcat for like $80,000, $90,000 fully loaded and this is so much more vehicle than that, and it's like the same price. I don't know how Ram made this truck as inexpensive as it is, but they somehow managed to do it. And yeah, even though today's video is about the five things I hate about this truck, I still absolutely love the truck, and I still think that it's, it's the best truck on the market right now. Now, that is going to sum things up for a video on the five things that I hate about my Ram T-Rex, and again, more like the five things that I slightly disagree with about the truck. As always, if you're stopping for the first time, please subscribe, comment down below what you think, and then I'll see all of you in the next video.